Hey guys, Coach Jason. Um, so what I want to do today is I want to go over something that um, is easily overlooked for a lot of distance runners, particularly ones at, you know that are running 5K, 10K, half marathon, and marathon, um, and that's speed development. Um, speed development is an important component of the training, and it is, it is an all-year thing. Okay, um, at different degrees throughout the year or throughout a season, depending on how you lay out your training, but it is an all-year thing, and it should not be neglected. Okay, um, before I go over this, I want to go over something else that, and, and that is um, after a long season or a long year, taking time off. Okay, um, there are a lot of approaches to this. My personal opinion is rather than taking, you know, two to four weeks off consecutively, um, I personally recommend taking a week to se a week to ten days, seven to ten days off completely, and then over the next two and a half to three weeks. Um, for a total of four weeks, um, you run every other day for the first week, maybe three miles on, three, mile, uh, three miles every other day, and then the following week, four miles every other day, and if it's another week after that, five miles every other day, and then you start to build up. The reason why I do that is because if you're training consistently throughout a year, a couple things that are going on. One, if you're training and recovering at the same time and you're doing it appropriately, then you don't you don't need to take a long extended period of time off at the end of the season or a year because you've been recovering all along. Secondly, um, there are th there are certain things that go on when you're training consistently. There are changes and you know strength and flexibility and tone that takes place not only in your muscles but in your tendons. And then when you take an extended period of time off, there are changes that happen again. Okay, and the longer you take off, the, the slower your buildup has to be when you start to come back. Otherwise, you put yourself at risk for injury. Um, and I can, and I see that happen to people who take two to three or four weeks off consecutively and then start to build up. That's why I recommend taking seven to ten days off completely, and then running every other day for the next two and a half to three weeks to give you a total of four weeks. So let's say you're ending your season in May. Right, um, and most, and if you're lucky enough to go into June and even July, that's tremendous. That's fantastic. Uh, but most, you know, most training years, if you're from a school standpoint, end in May. So let's say you know you finish out May, and then you take, um, or you finish out, you know, seven to ten days off in May, and then you have the last week or two, which gives you, you know, before the school year starts, about a twelve week period, um, and sometimes longer for a build up. Okay, June, July, August, you generally have thirteen weeks. Okay, um, and if you Take that little bit of a uh, couple, you know, seven, ten days off in May, and then if you have a little bit of extra time in May, you start your everyday running. Otherwise, you start it in June, which still gives you eight to ten weeks of good, solid base training before you start running uh, uh, training specifically, you know, race specific training for the fall. So it's just a, just a train of thought. Um, I hope that you'll consider it, or at least um, you know, consider applying it to whatever you do as an option. Okay, but let's go to this now. So the speed development. And if you if you've seen my other videos, and I encourage you to watch them, one of the videos that I do is a one mile time trial, um, and I do a one mile time trial at the end, generally of a base training period, which gives you a good, you know, eight weeks, six weeks, ten weeks of base training, and then running a one mile time trial. It'll give you a much better indicator of your fitness, and it'll not only help you set your training paces for everything. Uh, in terms of your long runs and your steady runs and your easy runs and your threshold and your intervals and so on, your tempo runs, but it also gives you an idea of where your fitness is for 400 and 800, which helps you set your uh, paces for components of speed development. So, um, the one mile time trial, definitely encourage you to watch that video. And, and I have it broken down from every mile from essentially six minutes all the way down to four minutes, um, and actually eight minutes down to four minutes. So you'll see a lot broken down by 20 seconds each time as well, okay? So you'll know exactly where you need to go, exactly where you should be based on your one-mile time trial for 400 and 800 as well as 3K and 5K and all of the training paces that go along with it as well. There's another video that says how to set your appropriate training paces, which gives you the details on that, okay? So again, one-mile time trial helps, us, helps establish your appropriate training paces for speed development and speed endurance, okay? Okay. Um, one of the first things I introduce, five by fifty meter strides. You'll see in a lot of my programs, it's kind of a staple in a lot of the, uh, a lot of my training programs. Um, you generally start weeks one through four. So the first four weeks of base training, you introduce that. You maybe do it once a week, um, and 
then you transition to five by 75 meter strides that you do twice a week for the weeks five through eight. And if you have, you know, a 12 week base period, then you transition, move it up to five by 100 meter strides for weeks nine through 12 or weeks nine through 10 if you only have a 10 week base period, okay? So you're doing a progression um, while you're building up your mileage and um, introducing some other dynamics as well, depending on what you like to introduce. Um, that's how I kind of like to progress the strides um, throughout the base training period, okay? The next thing I like to incorporate, hill repeats. It's another component of not only strength building, but speed development. And it's a great complement to flat running. This is how I have it broken down, okay? You go from five to eight by 50 meters, okay? Um, and you start at week five, so you take four weeks of your basic, um, basic runs and introducing some of those 50 meter strides. And then the next four weeks you introduce hill running. Okay, so you start at week five during your base phase. And then you transition to five by eight by 100 meters. You start at week seven. So the first one you do for two weeks, weeks five and six, then you go up to 100 meters. You do week seven and eight. You bump it up to week eight by five to eight by 150 meters, depending on the fitness of your athletes, the age, experience, and so on, and the type of volume that they're training at. Okay, weeks nine through 10. 150 meters and weeks 11 through 12 whether it's the end of the cross season or the beginning of the of the actual season when you're transitioning over five to eight by 200 meters okay um, weeks 11 and 12 so again you're doing them and it's a jog equal down recovery okay um, and then you transition towards uh, moving them and then what I what I like to do too is you know, you'll see this in a lot of my programs as well is you're going from doing this towards incorporating some of these at the end of a, a three mile, four mile, five mile, six mile tempo run, then you might add some hill repeats at the end of those tempo runs or a threshold workout five times a thousand, and you add five times a hundred meter hill afterward. Okay, um, and what you can do from here is you can transition into your basic speed development. Okay, so eight by ten by a hundred meters. Okay, during the base phase, it's going to be a three k to mile pace during the season from mile to 800 meter pace, okay? Walk the jog back recovery. Then you transition to seven to eight by 150 meters. During your base phase, again, 3K to mile pace. During the season, mile to 800 pace. It's a progression, it gets faster over time. You work towards five to six by 200 meters, okay? During the base phase at 3K pace. During the season, at mile pace, okay? And then you work towards four to five by 300 meters, okay? During the base season, Base phase, 5K to 3K pace. During the season, 3K to mile pace. You're getting a little bit longer, so. Um, and again, you could do this at the end of a run or at the end of a, of a tempo run or a threshold workout. So completely up to you, how you want to incorporate it. But it's a great transition. It's also something you can alternate. You can do hills after a workout one week, flat speed after a workout the following week. Completely up to you, okay? And again, alternating hill repeats in the base season and transition into um, Racing at racing season at the faster paces, which are these right here. Okay, so those are some options. Let's go to some more options. Okay. These first two I actually um, borrowed um, uh, and I kind of made it to my own from uh, running uh, run to the top by Coach Joe Vigil. And these are these are actually fantastic options that I use with a lot of my higher level distance runners, which have gone a long way towards developing their speed uh, for 5K, for 10K, for half marathon, okay? The first one is a progression from 100 all the way to 200 meters by increments of 10 meters. So 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, 180, 190, 200 meters, okay? And you add one second for every 10 meters, okay? So you can essentially start at 30 seconds so for this instance, for the 100 meters, and by the time you get to the 200, you're at 40 seconds. So the pace gets faster as the rep gets longer. Instead of the other way around, it's the other way around. So this is a true uh, speed development in a way of uh, you know teaching you how to accelerate throughout the workout as things get longer. Okay, and again, you add one second for every 10 meters added. You walk or you jog back as the recovery. Okay. This could be a whole entire day's workout, or you can add it to the back end of a tempo run, 
or a threshold workout, but what I would recommend is if you do that, you cut it in half. You either do the 100 up to 150 or 150 to 200 or 160 to 200. You can only do half the workout if you're tacking it on to the end of a something that's of already substantial volume, okay? And then what it does is it simulates turning over, it simulates learning how to accelerate when you're already fatigued. And that's also something I go over, oops, it's also something I go over in a lot of my other uh, videos as well. Okay, so again, smaller half or the longer half, completely up to you. You progress from 3K to mile pace, even down to 800 pace as you get fitter. This is something you can do in season every couple of weeks, um, every three weeks or so, um, but again, it's up to you. Another version of that is 200 to 300 meters in increments of 20 meters. Okay, so 200, 220, 240, 260, 280, 300. Okay, also from Coach B Hill, but a, kind of a little bit of a different twist. Okay, you add two seconds for every 20 second uh, for every 20 meters you add. Okay, you walk or you jog back as the recovery, and it's the same exact concept as above. Okay, you either do it as a solo workout. Okay, or you tack it on to the end of a tempo run or a threshold workout. This one here is less reps, so you can do the whole thing, or you can just do a couple of them. Completely up to you. Okay, um, depending on again the age of your athletes, the fitness of your athletes, what events you're training for, um, what type of volume they're at, and what you think that they can handle, what you think is most appropriate for either them or for you. All right. Uh, again, you progress from 3K down to mile or even 800 pace as you get much fitter. Okay. This is one that I came up with that I like to incorporate with my 5K, 10K people. Um, it's a progression from 50 meters to 100 to 150 to 200 to 250 to 300. So you're adding 50 meters per increment. Okay, a jog or a walk back recovery, and again you progress from 3K to mile pace. Okay, um, and for your super and your much fitter athletes, you need an 800 pace for the last rep if you can. It's pretty fast. Okay, and but you progress throughout the season or throughout the year, and again. These are all options you can do every couple of weeks. You can even do this one one time and then three weeks later do that and then three weeks later do that. It's completely up to you. Okay. And this last one I like is progression 150s. Teaches you how to gradually get faster throughout a rep. Okay. Um, it's 50 meter float, <clears throat> 50 meter stride, 50 meter sprint. So you go to float, to stride, to sprint. Okay, and you're progressively getting faster. It's kind of simulates, you know, the last 150 meters or the last lap of a race where you're just kind of gradually positioning yourself and positioning yourself and starting your second gear, your third gear, and your fourth gear, all right? And you jog back for recovery, okay? And it's a good thing to start with at the end of your base phase. Um, and then you do it into the season, and again, once every two or three weeks. So you can even go one, two, three, four over a 12-week cycle and repeat if you want, um, infused into the other things that you do. Okay. You can infuse the 5 by 50 meter strides or some of the other things we went over um, in the other, on the other board. You, know, you can incorporate all these different things. These are really good for transitioning base into race readiness. Okay. Um, and again, alternate with different components of speed development, like I said. And like I said in the beginning of this video, speed development is an all-year thing. Okay? It's not something you want to get away from significantly. What it does is it keeps you in tune or keeps you running fast to a certain degree all the time so that you're not having to take an extended period of time just to get back towards, um, you know, just get back towards turning over again. The, the one thing you don't want to do is get so far away from your top fitness that it takes you so much longer to get back. Even if you take a week or two or seven or 10 days and then you take three weeks of every other day, you're not really that far off, okay? And you're also giving your, you know, your body a chance to not only recover, but at the same time, not have any significant changes going on with your muscles and your tendons. So keeping healthy is critical. But at the same time, recovering is critical too. And like, like I said before, if you're training and recovering sufficiently throughout the year, then you don't have to make any drastic changes in your training. Okay. Um, so anyway, I hope this helps. If you have any questions of a personal nature or need any specific guidance, my email is blackbeltrunningcoach at gmail.com. I also have an Instagram where I put a lot of running content out as well. It's blackbeltrunningcoach is my profile. So please, you know, please follow me on Instagram. If you find this content valuable, please click the like button. And please click the subscribe button because you'll get direct access to all my videos. And it knows that I know that the content's valuable so I can continue to send out more content. Anyway, I hope this helps. 
uh, feel free to use it any way you like, uh, incorporate what you like, um, and uh, have a great season, good luck, and go get them.